It's safe to assume that when someone is convicted of committing a serious crime, that person will be incarcerated. There's a twofold reason for this. With crime comes punishment. And for the protection of society, it's prudent to keep the thugs behind bars where hopefully they shall learn a lesson. But what is prison life really like? Well, incredibly, for those who are corrections officers who must deal with prisoners on a daily basis, this is a job increasingly fraught with danger. Not only is physical assault commonplace, but management seems more concerned about the well-being of the prisoners rather than the prison guards. At least these are the allegations of a corrections officer who currently works at an Ontario prison who recently reached out to the rebel to tell his story. We have agreed to disguise his identity so that he doesn't lose his job for speaking out. But just wait till you hear his story about what it's like to be a guard who must deal with society's worst of the worst on a daily basis in a facility where it often seems that the inmates are indeed running the asylum. My first question to my guest, who we shall call Frank, was this. What are the common problems he deals with at the Ontario institution where he works? Uh, corruption for management, uh, not uh, making uh, inmates uh, accountable for their actions, constant uh, undermining of staff. Um, when uh, staff is uh, trying to do their job, uh, they constantly uh, undermine us, micromanage us, and uh, make sure uh, inmates are comfy and happy like, uh, like little children. As long as uh, they don't have to have paperwork done, then the job is, uh, well, then the job is okay. Um, staff assaults, constant staff assaults. Uh, and once again, uh, I revert back to uh, uh, management not doing anything to make inmates take, take accountability into their actions and uh, giving out uh, consequences the way uh, they should be done. Also, uh, there's uh, quite a bit of uh, racial favoritism involved. Um, management uh, 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 undermining staff for inmates just because of the color of their skin and uh, um, also uh, uh, prom promotion, promotion, uh, promotions as such uh, because of the color of their skin. And it's also the ability to transport contraband into the uh, into the institution because of this uh, people are afraid to uh, sp uh, speak up uh, not because uh, you know not be not because of harm but they know that uh, the second they speak up the the reason the, the, the most of the time their voices won't be heard and they'll just be labeled as a racist or a rat and that kind of thing even when it is confirmed that a prisoner is acting violently frank says corrections officers are handcuffed and how they can respond. Well, according to the use of force uh, uh, cycle, um, uh, and, and of course, naturally, in any uh, in any law enforcement position, uh, whether it be corrections or the police or even uh, uh, security, uh, you're supposed to use as much force as necessary. We're 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 trained uh, very very primitively in our uh, in, at Belcarin, our training ground, uh, about how to use force. Um, it's uh, impractical techniques were used uh, to, to handle to handle inmates uh, in, when we're involved in hostile situations. But nowadays, even a simple a simple action as a C clamp and and using force to maintain order is uh, looked down by management, and we're told to stand down constantly and. Uh, and those who uh, uh, usually we're just told if an uh, inmate is uh, uh, getting assaulted, call a sergeant. And get this, this particular facility is supposed to be a so-called hands-free jail, meaning guards are not supposed to touch the inmates. The inmates are actually told this, and the results, well, they're predictable. We're getting we're getting assaulted, or uh, we're getting uh, verbally taunted by inmates because by not doing anything, we lose we lose credibility, we lose respect, we lose order of the unit. These uh, the way these inmates are nowadays, these kids nowadays, and like a lot, a lot of them are just kids. They don't respect verbal communication. They respect action, but they know because a lot of sergeants will tell them 
that this facility, sergeants have literally, literally told inmates, this is a hands-free jail, the, the, the staff can't touch you. And inmates will holler around in a certain situation, these guys can't touch us. And they tell us, you know, I can do what I want, you can't touch me. Where does that leave us as, uh, as uh, law enforcement professionals? We are law enforcement professionals. We are the ones who, who control the unit. And management takes that power right, right from under us. And so what is the ostensible policy reason for such a system? Here's Frank's take. Um, the management is willing to sacrifice safety and security just to be, just to make this the, the image of this new jail that represents the whole of the new corrections in Canada, that this image is working and it's not working. They, our superintendent has really done next to nothing uh, about uh, making things safer for the employees. And we all know we sign on for a job that can put us into uh, imminent danger. We all know this, but a prerequisite of the job is yeah, you're going to get assaulted on a daily basis and management will not have your back. Uh, that, that's not a pre prerequisite. That's not, it's not, in other words, it's not part of the job. Like, in other words, you can't just say, it's okay, it's part of the job. No, it's not part of the job. It's a risk you take, but it's not part of the job. It doesn't just justify it. But also, but uh, the why? Well, again, a lot of, uh, I blame it on a lot of um, side enterprises and corruption that are being made beh behind, and deals be that are being made behind closed doors between inmates and uh, management. And I mean, uh, mostly the, the sergeants who, uh, who, are, who are supposedly uh, trying to, who supposedly we're supposed to trust. Frank also notes that non-white prisoners, especially, receive the kid gloves treatment. Because the, um, a lot of uh, the, the suspensions that happen are on uh, uh, ca Caucasian males, and from what I've seen, they're getting harsher suspensions when they uh, defend themselves and do their, their, do their duty against it uh, when, 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 when inmates are involved in hostile situations. It just so happens inmates are people of color, but the situation is not mo racially motivated, like as far as the officer is concerned. We're just doing our job. But why is it that when uh, uh, certain officers are suspended, Caucasian officers compared to uh, officers that, that, uh, that are people of color, the suspensions are harsher. And these assaults are not a matter of he said, she said. There is video surveillance everywhere, but that doesn't seem to matter. Simply, well, you should have called the sergeant and disengaged, which uh, I stated before, most of the time does absolutely next to nothing because you disengage and you call a sergeant, you lose credibility, you lose respect on the unit. Uh, a sergeant will come and show up and to deal with the problem and the words go in one ear and out the other. The way these inmates are, they, don't, they, they, they like to play the game, they like to play victim, they're not stupid. Well, I mean, they're in jail, but at the end of the day, they're not stupid, they're very manipulative. Okay, a lot of them, and obviously, I'm not saying they're all rotten people. No, I mean some of them just done have done bad things and stupid things. But there are still that majority who uh, they're very manipulative, and they just nod and smile at the sergeant, who will just say he's okay, he'll be fine, and just just give him this, just give him that. Well, no, you've just reinforced his behavior. You reinforce bad behavior, you make me look bad. As for threatening to put a prisoner in segregation, well, <laughs> turns out segregation is not the punishment you might think it is. I mean, historically, segregation was called the whole for us. Yes. And, and I mean, it's not like it was in the 30s or, or before that, where it's just a dark corner of, of the building, and, but it's, it's there for punishment. You, you're there, you get sent there uh, because you've assaulted another inmate or you, you've assaulted staff. But now, and what, the only thing, you, you know, I mean, they don't, it's not cruel or unusual punishment. They, 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 they allow you your clothes, of course, uh, and they give you your blankets and they give you your free meals a day and you do get showers. Uh, you even get, uh, you're supposed to, by protocol, you're supposed to get, you're supposed to get a phone call uh, during a certain time of day. But nowadays, these inmates can get whatever they want. They can get their canteen, all their stuff they buy, like the chips and candy and, and goodies. They can get that whenever they want. That, and, and they get blankets, actual blankets. Recently, we've seen violent murderers reassigned to native healing circles. So is this no-touch prison facility part of Justin Trudeau's kinder, gentler vision 
of hard time? I'm uh, going to say most likely, like, like, like uh, as much as everyone likes to complain about this facility and everybody wants to transfer out, the word is we're getting that that's where that's the direction that uh, the Ministry of Community Safety and uh, Correctional Services is going, uh, as far as Ontario goes. But I'm going to, I dare say, you know, that's how that's the direction Canada is going, where they want to focus more on reintegration and rehabilitation. But to me, it's all like it's all under the guise of being politically correct and they're willing to sacrifice safety and security of officers for just to appear politically correct. As well, contraband is out of control. Frank relates the story of a gang leader that was able to have a steak and lobster dinner smuggled into the prison. Steak and lobster was uh, uh, smuggled into the institution, uh, smuggled into one of our one of one of the inmates who's a well-known uh, gang member. Uh, he um, his uh, co-accused, from what I understand, just got sent uh, to uh, do federal time. Uh, he's still this uh, in individual has still uh, remained in our institution. Um, he's a part of uh, a King of Hearts gang, I believe. Finally, it. All sounds like so much political correctness run amok or perhaps something lifted from the pages of a clockwork orange. Frank is frustrated, but at the same time he's hopeful that by raising this issue publicly, changes will be enacted. There's always an excuse. It's always it's always an excuse. It's always, oh, this inmate was this, he grew up this way, he grew up that way. We have a lot of staff who grew up in, in similar situations. In fact, we have a lot of staff that grew up in the same areas as these inmates. Why are they able to take a positive into, or a, a negative into a positive? Uh, so at the end of the day, to me, no, there's no excuse. And we're not here, we as officers are not here to be social workers. We're correctional officers. We're there to do the job. We're there to maintain order. Our job is, is care, custody, and control. We're not there to, uh, to p play favorites. We're not there to bring in contraband. And we're not there to be servants to these inmates. So there you have it, folks. At one Ontario correctional facility, the inmates really are running the asylum. What with solitary confinement being akin to a hotel room and prisoners being able to smuggle in steak and lobster dinners, this particular prison comes across as an all-inclusive resort rather than a correctional facility. Meanwhile, guards are almost powerless to stop these inmates who act out violently. Indeed, guards are reprimanded for even using the slightest modicum of force, even when it comes to self-defense. And perhaps worst of all, it is you, the Canadian taxpayer, who is paying for this farcical New Age concept of hands-free incarceration. So much for that old saying that states, crime doesn't pay. For the Rebel.media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, you can now listen to all Rebel shows as a podcast. Please go to the Rebel.media slash listen.